The Honda Civic is a series of automobiles manufactured by Honda since 1972. As of 2023, the Civic is positioned between the Honda Fit and the Honda Accord in Honda's global car lineup. In today's episode, we're going to learn all about the first six to seven generations, depending on how much time I have, of the Honda Civic. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you being here. Welcome to the second episode ever of the podcast. Um, I had a lot of people request the Honda Civic, so that's what we're going to do. Woo, I'm excited. Uh, the Honda Civic is probably, it's just a world-renowned car. You really can't talk about a Honda Civic and not know what it is, you know? Everybody knows what a Honda Civic is. Heck, there's probably 90% of you listening who probably own a Honda Civic, let's be honest. Um, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so very much. But uh, let's get right into it. Today we're going to talk about the first six generations at least. We're going to see if I have enough time to do the seventh I might actually only have time for five. I'm not too sure how much time we're going to have, but there will be a second part to the Honda Civics that'll go through the rest of the generations. And there might be a third for just for like a fun fact bonus episode I might do. Um, So either way, if you really like Honda Civics, this will not be the only Honda Civic episode. There will be another one and possibly a third one. But let's go ahead and get started. Once again, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. So, the first generation Civic was introduced in July of 1972 as a two-door fastback sedan, followed by a three-door hatchback that September, with a 1100cc transverse engine and front-wheel drive. The car provided good interior space despite overall small dimensions, initially gaining a reputation for being fuel efficient, reliable, and environmentally friendly. Later iterations have become known for performance and sportiness, especially the Civic Type R, the Civic VTI, Civic GTI, and the SIR and SI. Of course, everybody knows the Type R and the SI. Probably the, one of the most popular modified cars of all time. The Civic has been repeatedly rebadged for international markets and served as a basis for the Honda CRX, the Honda CRX Del Sol, the Concerto, the first generation Prelude, the Civic Shuttle, and the CRV which was used as a basis for the FRV. The Civic is one of the all-time best-selling automobiles in the world, with over 27 million units sold since 1972. And I did research for this, but that might be a little old. I think the website and all of the stuff I used is probably a little delayed, so it's probably over 30 million by now. Not, not guaranteed. Uh, don't quote me on that but there's a chance. Honda, after establishing itself as a leading manufacturer of motorcycles during the 1950s, began production of automobiles in 1963. Honda introduced its N360 mini car, compliant with K car specifications for the Japanese market for the 1967 model year. The car had a transverse mounted front engine and front wheel drive layout, which is known as FF in all the car communities, which would be adopted for the later Honda 1300 and Civic models. The Civic gave Honda their first market success, competing with manufacturers of standard compact cars, which has growth segments as sales of K cars plateaued and wand into the early 1970s. So yeah, K cars got very popular and were pretty common for a while because people were just like hey small car really good gas mileage of course in japan you had the benefits of with the insurance tax benefits stuff like that i don't think it's insurance i think it's just tax you had tax benefits in japan if you have a k car you still do um which most of you probably know but even just the size of the car and the reliability the great gas mileage was very popular a lot of people wanted to copy that It was Honda's first model to have an impact in the export market. It became one of the most influential automotive designs of the 1970s, with the Volkswagen Golf, Ford Fiesta, and Fiat Ritmo showing similarities as transverse FF hatchbacks, occupying a size niche between mini cars and compact sedans. The Renault 5 was introduced six months before the Honda Civic, which appeared later in July. Honda would later expand the Civic's FF compact design to produce the larger and more upmarket Accord, 
and Prelude. In Japan, the Civic was the first fully modern compact car in the European style, offering a level of prestige never before seen in the market. The Civic quickly inspired Japanese domestic manufacturers to respond in kind with models like the Mazda Familia, the Daihatsu Charade, and the Mitsubishi Mirage. Can't go wrong with the Mirage, am I right guys, am I right? Previously a subcompact since 2000, the Civic has been categorized as a compact car. U.S. EPA guidelines for vehicles, size, class stipulate a car having combined passenger and cargo room of 110 to 119.9 cubic feet is considered a mid-sized car. And such, the 10th generation Civic sedan is technically a small-end mid-sized car, although it still competes in the compact class. Now, that's just kind of up to the fact that all these rules and all this is... You know, they're, they're all crazy and specific with the stuff that they do. And, I mean, it's it goes to, what did I say, 119.9. So if it was 120, it'd be a large, a large size car, which is, is pretty funny. But there's really nothing. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. It's still cool because people still use them as a compact car in compact classes and stuff like that. In Japan, as customers increasingly shifted to minivans and compact cars like the Fit, production of the non-hybrid Civic ended in August 2010. However, the Civic was reintroduced into the Japanese market with the launch of the 10th generation in 2017. And we're going to get more into that in probably the next episode. Um, the audio might be a bit janky for this. I'm going to test it out. I'm trying a new microphone setting i'm eventually going to get an actual microphone hopefully within like the next month uh but i'm testing this out this is different from the first episode we're gonna see how it goes how it sounds it's all an experiment here and that's why that's what you get to see being some of the first people listening which i really appreciate by the way thank you for being here um so we're gonna start off with the first generation and move down from there and see how far we get. The first generation Civic was introduced on July 11th, 1972, but sold as a 1973 model in Japan. It was equipped with a 1669cc four-cylinder water-cooled engine and featured front power disc brakes, reclining vinyl bucket seats, simulated wood trim on the dashboard, as well as optional air conditioning and an AM-FM radio. The Civic was available as a two- or four-door fastback sedan, three and a five-door hatchback as well as a five-door station wagon because of the 1973 oil crisis consumer demanded for fuel efficient vehicles was high and because of the engine being able to run on either leaded or unleaded fuel it gave drivers fuel choice flexibility over other vehicles the compound vortex controlled combustion engine also known as cvcc which is kind of the reason why it was called the civic cvcc i mean that's that's the name of the car, CBCC, and that's why they called it a Civic. So that way they're not like, oh yeah, I drive a CBCC. No, it's just I drive a Civic. Pretty cool. I didn't know that for a long time. I learned that a few years ago, probably. Uh, the CBCC engine debuted in December of 1973 with a head design that allowed for more efficient combustion. As a benefit, the CBC system did not require a catalytic converter or unleaded fuel to meet the 1975 Environmental Protection Agency emission standard for hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide. Now, that's just kind of in there, so for fancy schmancy stuff. The Civic was joined by a platform expansion of three-door hatchback called the Honda Accord in 1976. So three years later, you got the Honda Accord hatchback. First gen Honda Accord, can't go wrong. Now, the second generation Civic was introduced in June of 1979 as a 1980 model. It was a larger, more angular car and came with increased engine power. All Civic engines now use the CVCC design, which added a third valve per cylinder. This introduced the lean burn swirl technology, which you should probably look more into online, it's pretty interesting. This generation was available with a 1300cc engine, 
and with the optional 1500cc, it was actually 1488, but they listed it as 1500. Uh, power outputs vary considerably between Japan, Europe, North America, and other markets. Three transmissions were offered, a 4-speed manual on the base models, a 5-speed manual, and a 2-speed semi-automatic. Honda had previously called the Honda-matic. Wow, look at that. How original. The second generation Civic was offered as a 3-door hatchback and a 4-door sedan, a 5-door hatchback, and a 5-door wagon. I worded that weird, that's my apologies. So, second generation is when they started, you know, making the cars actually a bit quicker. And they gave you a few more options. You had a hatchback, you had a wagon, you had a multi, you could either choose a 3-door or a 4-door, or sorry, 5-door hatchback, or you had a 5-door wagon. Like, you, you had choices, which is pretty cool. The third generation Civic was released in September of 1983 for the 1984 model year. The separate five-door hatchback and wagon models were merged into a five-door shuttle wagon or wago van, as they called it, sometimes referred to as the bread box because of its appearance, called the Honda Civic Shuttle. An additional two-seat coupe style labeled the CRX was introduced, noted for its compact dimensions and lightweight. The third generation Civic saw the introduction of the long running four cylinder D series engine, including a new 1.5 liter CBCC engine, producing a whole whopping 76 horsepower. 1984 also saw the release of a high performance SI model for the Japanese market, featuring upgraded suspension and the 1.6 liter double overhead camshaft ZC engine, which was rated at 128 horsepower. SI models were offered in the U.S. as a three-door Civic SI hatchback and the CRX SI variant with a 91 horsepower single overhead camshaft 12-valve engine with fuel injection. A four-wheel drive configuration with different transmission mounts was introduced for the first time in 1984 and later upgraded in 1987. It delivered a fuel economy of around 28 miles per gallon on the highway, which that's not, I mean, that's pretty good, especially nowadays. It's a little below what Saturn's would get, if you heard the first episode, but definitely not bad. The four-wheel drive system was push-button operated until improved in 1987, when rear wheels would engage automatically once the front wheels lost traction. This new system was called Real-Time, which used a viscous coupler connecting two propeller shafts between the front and rear axles. The manual transmission featured a synchronized six gear called SL or Super Low, not the Saturn S series that we all know and love, which was used for high torque at very low speeds. The real-time idea is still utilized to this day, but includes technological improvements since the first system. Starting with 1985, Japanese Civics were now exclusive to Honda Primo, with variants sold at Honda Verno and Honda Clio, a four-door version called the Ballad. Ballad? Assuming the Ballad was built under agreement by Mercedes-Benz South Africa. Models were 1300, 1500, 1500i, and 1600 dual overhead cam, 1.6 liter injection. So that that real-time thing is really cool. That sounds like such an awesome thing to use. It sounds really fun. I almost wish Saturn's had that, to be honest. Because you know how fun that would be? If you could just... Oh, I don't have to engage four-wheel drive. It's just going to start working. That'd be so sick. We will probably get to the 7th gen, I think. Judging by how fast we're going. So, to the 4th gen. Heck, we might get through more of it. We're going to find out. In September of 1987, a redesigned Civic was introduced with increased dimensions and a lower hood line. A wide range of models and trim levels were offered for various markets around the world, the most notable of which was the Japanese market SIR, featuring a B16 1.6 liter dual overhead cam with VTEC. All US models featured electronic fuel injection, but carbureted models were still available elsewhere. The fourth generation saw the introduction of a fully independent rear suspension across the entire model range. In addition, the Honda CRX continued to be a part of the Civic family, which included the base model, HF, and SI model in the US. Four-door version called the Ballade was built, or Ballad, Ballad, it's definitely not Ballad, 
There's an E at the end. It's definitely not valid. Well, I guess valid. Uh, who cares? <laughs> I could be wrong. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Under agreement by Mercedes-Benz. So this is a fourth gen. The first 800 cars produced at the then brand new Honda plant in Alston, Ontario, Canada, were SE model cars. These special edition models included all white side molding that matched the white body and color matched dual mirrors. In the body molding was a wrap around blue stripe. Each car had interior upgrades as well as a chrome tipped exhaust. So you're definitely getting a lot of bonus stuff there. Um, it seems like if you you were a collector or somebody that really loved these cars, that'd be the one you want to get. I mean, you got pretty much OEM Plus, but it's actually OEM. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Fifth Gen, introduced in September 1991 for the 1992 model year. The redesigned Civic featured increased dimensions as well as more aerodynamic styling. The wagon variant was now only available in the Japanese market, where the previous generation wagon was carried over until 1995. The efficiency of the previous HF model was replaced by the VX hatchback, which with an EPA rating of 48 to 55 miles per gallon, which is crazy. 48 to 55 miles per gallon is crazy. That's like Geo Metro numbers. It was Honda's most fuel efficient model sold at the time. In North America, the SI featured a 1.6 liter single cam VTEC valve train, whereas the VX featured the VTEC E. The Japanese SI featured a 1.6 liter dual cam v non VTEC sorry, valve train and a D16A9. Continuing the sporty tradition of the original Civic, Honda sold several similarly equipped variants of the fifth generation car, still referred to as the SIR in Japan, Asia, and Europe. In South Africa, MBSA, Mercedes-Benz of South Africa, built the Civic as the, you know, that ballad word, only in four-door sedan, so that you can only get a four-door sedan. A special model was the 180i with the B18B4, but that was before that was fitted to the Ballad model, Ballade, Ballad, whatever it is. I didn't research how to properly say it, but I know you know what I mean. It's B-A-L-L-A-D-E if you want to look it up. But I know things are pronounced differently no matter how they're spelled. So really, there's no way I could really know. Um, a new body style was introduced with this generation called the Civic Coupe, based on the Civic Fiero sedan. I, I, I did not mean to say Fiero. I'm thinking I got Pontiac on the brain. I got Pontiac on the brain. Uh, it was sold in North America, Europe, and Japan. The fifth generation remains popular among tuners and racers of like. Of course, you can't go wrong with the fifth gen Civic. It's, I mean, you see one, you know, you know that's a Civic. And it's a fun looking car. I've definitely seen some really nicely modified versions. I've also seen some that aren't very good, but they're usually pretty good and they can definitely be pretty quick if you know what you're doing and what you're putting into them sixth gen okay you know i'm just gonna put it all in here i'm gonna fit as much information as i can i don't need to make this a multi-part series if i don't have to so we're just gonna go through sixth gen we're gonna go through seventh gen and you know what we're probably gonna go to like 11th because i'm pretty sure generation right now so, uh, introduced in September of 1995 for the 1996 model year, the sixth generation featured updated styling, although less radical than previous designs, of course, because as times were going on, cars started to get less and less cool. Well, that's not exactly true. Um, they definitely are still cool. There's lots of cool cars that are made today and within the past like few years, but generally cars started to get less cool every now and then you'll have your exceptions like the bmw m3s and all that but overall i mean they weren't bad yet but it has started getting worse at this time <laughs> suspension and engine options were available along with their natural gas-powered civic the gx in the united states model year 1996 to 2000 the civic was sold under the cx dx ex exr HX, LX, and for Canada, the SE and SI trims. All base models were made with a 1.6 liter four cylinder. The EX and CH, CX are all single cam. The CX, DX, and LX all have a single cam four cylinder, but it was the D16 
whereas the EX has a 1.6 liter 16 valve single cam D16Y8, which produced 127 horsepower, and the HX has a D16Y5 VTEC E engine producing 115 horsepower. The USDM SI and the Canadian SIR came with a 1.6 liter 16 valve dual overhead cam VTEC B16A2 producing 160 horsepower. That's a lot of information, especially with all those CX, DX, EX, EXR, HX, LX, all that. That's a lot to take in. So uh, if you have to rewind, feel free to do so. Nobody will judge you. You're, yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot to take in, definitely a lot to learn. Um, but yeah, it's kind of crazy how many different options they had. There were a lot of different options for a lot of different people's likes and what they wanted, which is really cool. Because a lot of cars would be like, oh, here's the base model, and then here's the slightly cooler version, and then that's it. Sometimes you don't even get a slightly cooler version, which I feel like there are a lot of cars where if they had somebody in the design team make just like a kitted out version from factory, probably would have gotten a lot more sales. Like the Kia Stinger GT, for example, just a normal Kia Stinger. Nobody really cares about it, but the Kia Stinger GT, that's, that's a pretty cool car. I mean, it's not my favorite, but it's... I've seen some really nice ones, and they're pretty cool. It's, they're cool to see on the road, just willy-nilly, if you will. Let's see. The first Civic Si Coupe EM1 was introduced in 1999 and was produced until 2000. Europe saw a dual-can cam 1.6 VTI hatchback in sedan, and a dual-cam 1.8-liter engine was available for the Domani-related Blah, 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 blah. Five door lift back and estate. In Canada, the Acura EL is based on a Civic and was replaced by the CSX in 2006. So, 6th gen, probably one of the most popular, uh, just especially because of the EM1, probably one of the most popular generations of the Civic. I mean, you can't go wrong with the hatchbacks can't go wrong with the sedans can't go wrong with the em1 you, you really you can't can't go wrong i mean <laughs> the, the hatchbacks are definitely probably the favorite especially for sixth generation um here you see with sixth generation you can see the similarities between gen 5 but if you then compare gen 6 to gen 4 you see a big big difference Whereas they were fairly similar, first gen, second gen were very, very similar, practically the same. Then you could see the modernized from second to third and third to fourth, but then fourth to fifth was a pretty big design change. Like the, the main parts were the same, but looking at the actual body panels themselves, you could see the big difference. And then it really changed even more for the sixth generation. Now, seventh gen, uh, <laughs> This is this is kind of where it lost all its funk. You know, this is this definitely isn't the favorite um to say the least. I've seen again, I've seen some nice ones for sure. I've seen some that have looked really good, but I've also seen a lot that just have it. You know, they're not they're definitely not one of the favorites. If hey, if you own one, okay, no offense. 7th generation, good for you, you own a Civic, that's sick, especially if you own the hatchback. The 7th gen hatchback is pretty cool, not gonna lie, uh, especially the Type R, pretty sweet, I will admit. This is the 7th gen Type R is pretty good, but, eh, you know, eh. The five door hatchback is interesting too. You definitely want the three door though. But anyway. The seventh generation Civic was released in September 2000 for the 01 model year. While the redesign retained the previous generation's exterior dimension, interior space was improved in part by using a flat rear floor, thus bumping up Civic to a compact car size segment. The front suspension was changed to a double wishbone or from a double wishbone to a Mac first and strut in order to lower cost as well as allow more engine bay room for the newly introduced Honda K series, of course. The infamous Honda K series. Everybody knows about the Honda K series. There's plenty of people who actually swap Honda K series 
into non Hondas. I mean, there's, there's people who have put K Series engine in Saturns before. Also, I'm going to bring up Saturns a lot. I'm going to reference Saturns a lot. If that annoys you, I'm sorry, but they're kind of like my thing. So uh, if it does annoy you, you know, I'll try to do it a little less. Just let me know. T type it in that Q&A down below. But I can't really help it, you know? It's just kind of who I am. It's a part of me. Power was also increased on some trim levels. The four main trim levels were the DX, LX, EX, and the HX. The Civic Coupe was no longer sold in Japan, starting with the 7th Gen. RIP Japan, but then again, they got like the best of the Civic. So I'm sure they probably weren't too upset. In North America, coupe and sedan body styles were available, except for the SI, which offered only as a three-door hatchback. The rest of the world received three and five door hatchbacks. The Type R was redesigned as well, this time during using a more powerful iVTEC engine and using a three door hatchback body style. This generation saw Honda introduce their first Civic Hybrid powered by a 1.3 liter engine. So there you go. That also tells you because, you know, hybrids are coming out, which again, nothing entirely wrong with hybrids. I mean, the new Prius is pretty sweet. Don't know if you've seen it. I'm, me personally, I'm a big fan of the new Prius. It looks awesome. There's one person that has already slammed it and put camber on it in Japan. It looks sick. It looks really good. I can't lie. So now we're on to the eighth gen. This is probably, probably one of the most common ones you see on the road nowadays. Just because they're not like old enough yet to really be extinct. I see a lot of 8th generation Civics on the road, um, which is actually interesting how different they look from North America to Asia to Europe Europe and Australia. It's crazy how there's a big, especially with the Europe one, it looks very different compared to North America. I definitely recommend looking up pictures of those just to see how crazy, how big of a difference it really is. Um, the 8th generation Civic was released in September of 2005 in North America, for the North American market, for the 2006 model year, of course, because that's how they do it. For the 8th generation, Honda split the model into two different platforms, one for the sedan and one for coupe. Oh, and one for hatchback. Okay, that was my bad. I meant to say... I mean, that's technically two platforms. Never mind. I was right. I just read it wrong. Ignore me. This is fun part of the podcast, okay? If you're here to have fun, you can laugh at me. Do it. Actually, I encourage it. <laughs> but you got... Where was I? Two different platforms. You got the sedan and coupe platform, and you got the hatchback designed primarily for the European market, which we didn't really get here. Um, the North America and Asian Pacific models slightly differ in front and rear styling. They're mechanically identical. The hatchback is available as a three door and five door. Both SI and Type R trim levels continued through. All <clears throat> I'm trying to go too fast. I'm sorry, guys. Why am I speeding? I got so much time left. Let me get back to the speed limit here. Let me slow down. Both SI and Type R trim levels continued, although the Japanese and European Type R, while sharing the same engine size, are mechanically different. In the United States, an improved sportier version of the Civic SI 4-door, tuned by tuner Mugen, was offered, featuring cosmetic alterations and changes to the suspension. Of course, everybody knows the Mugen kits, the Mugen wings you see them all the time. It's a pretty cool looking kit, I'm not gonna lie. They, they can look pretty good. They're not like way over the top which is a nice it's a nice kind of tuner look uh was featuring cosmetic alterca alterations not altercations they're not fighting and changes to the suspension wheels slight exterior differences and exhaust system a canadian only acura model received a new nameplate changing from the acura el to the acura csx as of 2006 a total of 16.5 million civics had been sold worldwide with 7.3 of them being in the United States. So that's pretty good. That's a lot of Civics in the United States. <laughs> I mean, that's why you see them so often. They're everywhere. You can't escape them. You're never going to be able to go to a store and not see a Civic in a parking spot. It's going to happen. No matter what you do, it's going to happen. Guaranteed every single time. You're going to see at least one, and it's probably going to be an 8th gen or a 7th gen 
If you're lucky, you'll see a first gen. I saw a first gen at my local junkyard like a few months ago. The thing was pretty cool. It was sad to see it there, but it looked pretty cool. I'd never seen a first gen Civic that up close before. I definitely would drive one if I got the chance. They look, they look fun. They look really fun. But with this, we move on to Gen 9. Now, this is where, in my opinion, it really became just about being a family car for gas, good gas mileage and, you know, fair pricing. Uh, this was kind of probably my least favorite. I think this is probably my least favorite generation of the Honda Civic, just because it, it lacked the Civic. You know, it just looked like, oh, it's just a family sedan. You know, it's, it's okay. It's cool. They're cool. I don't hate them. They're just not my favorite. The ninth generation Civic consists of four body styles, which are sedan, coupe, hatchback, and station wagon, marketed as the Civic Tourer. Everybody loves the Tourer. The latter two makes up for the European market Civic range built in the UK. The hatchback version forms as a basis for the Civic Type R, which was released later in 2015. Ninth generation was released in 2011, by the way. The production version of the ninth generation Civic sedan and coupe first went on sale in the US on April 20, 2011. Well, there it is for the 2012 model year. The model was developed during the height of the global financial crisis, which led Honda to believe that consumers, specifically in North America, would be willing to forego upscale content and quality in new cars as long as they were fuel efficient and affordable. Which, yeah, that was pretty accurate. A pretty smart move on them because it, I'd say it definitely worked. Following criticisms regarding quality and refinement, Honda updated the Civic with new exterior and interior improvements in late 2012 for the 2013 model year. The ninth generation Civic was never introduced in Japan except the 750 unit limited run Civic Type R sold in 2015. So there's only 750 Civic Type Rs introduced into Japan. That's kind of crazy. I personally didn't know that. That's pretty crazy. That's that is not many cars at all. Like that is not a lot of cars. It seems like a big number, but car wise, that is like nothing. A hybrid version was also available for the sedan model, equipped with a larger 1.5 liter IV Tech engine that produced 90 horsepower and 97 foot pounds of torque, and a lithium ion battery, which is it's it's rated at 45 miles per gallon which is that's pretty good. You can't really beat that. Um, in combined city and highway EPA test cycle, an improvement of three miles per gallon over the previous generation. Civics have always been known for having good gas mileage. Everybody knows that. That's just kind of the way it is. Um, it's kind of similar to Saturn's. Of course, I'm bringing it up. But honestly, there was a point in time like then when Civics actually did have better gas mileage than pretty much every car on the road I mean you really couldn't beat it um, that's why for a lot of people they're great first cars to have they're great first cars to buy for your kids they're great family cars because you don't have to fill up on gas every like three days and they're it's fairly cheap they're only like a 12 gallon tank maybe some of them might be more so it didn't cost much to fill up either definitely a great car for a first car a family car Really anybody. I mean, you can't go wrong with a Civic. Now for the 10th gen. The 10th generation was, I really liked, I really liked the 10th generation Civics. They're cool. They're cool looking and they're back to being stylish. Like they, they grab your attention again. The one before this pretty bland, wouldn't really look twice at it on the road. This one, I don't know how to explain it. The 10th generation is just a good Civic. I think the 10th gen Type R is probably one of my favorites. Um, just because of all the shapes and angles, it's definitely cool. Definitely a cool looking little sports car. I like the 10th gen myself. Based on an all new Honda Compact global platform, the 10th generation Civic marketed the unification of the Civic range globally. Honda targeted the Civic range at the key US market, resurrecting its once discarded lead country system, which calls for develop developing a model specifically for its main targeted market, but selling it in other regions as well. As a result, Honda sees making a smaller dedicated version for the European market. Instead, 
The Swindon, point, Swindon plant in UK produced a five-door hatchback version of the globally marketed Civic for international markets. So they all kind of they all started looking the same. Instead of having a different car in different places, they were just like, hey, let's just make them all look the same, make it a little easier. Let's see. The sedan model was first unveiled in the U.S. in September 2015 for the 2016 model year. The 10th generation Civic features a new fastback exterior design with the rear C-pillar flowing into the tailgate. The front of the car features a new chrome wing design that flows across the top of the headlamps. Civic body styles included sedan, coupe, five-door hatchback, while performance models included the SI trims and the Type R models, of course, of course, of course. The hatchback version saw its reintroduction in the North American market for the first time since 2000, along with the first Type R model ever sold in the region, both imported from the UK. The interior of the new Civic likewise features major design changes, unlike the split bi-level speedometer and tachometer of its predecessor. 10th generation Civic consolidates these instruments into an optional driver information interface, incorporating a customizable 7-inch LCD screen positioned directly behind the steering wheel and in the driver's line of sight. Several models received an instrumentation that consists of a large analog tachometer, analog, sorry, tachometer that surrounds a digital speedometer and other digital displays. So they were definitely lots of cool upgrades with the interior, made, made it feel like a nicer more luxurious ish for a civic I mean, let's be honest car definitely cool uh i i'm a i mean not a big fan but i'm a fan of these especially the hatchbacks the normal ones the normal sedans eh. the hatchbacks i like the hatchbacks more than the coupes the coupes look weird in my opinion you can't go wrong with a 10th gen hatchback though that's a pretty good car i like I, I just i like the way it looks you look at it and you know that's a 10th gen civic very angular, very different design, especially from everything being released at the time. I, I'm a pretty big fan. I was a pretty big fan, still kind of am. That was until they revealed the 11th generation Civic. This might be my favorite Civic? Uh, hmm, nah, okay, no. My favorite New Edge Civic. My favorite Type R? That's probably a yes. It's really hard to pick, but I really like the new Type R. Well, I say it's two years old now, almost three, but the new Type R, ugh, the 11th and Type R is so good. It just looks, ugh, it looks so good. Ah. Woo. It definitely did fall into um, just kind of more of a basic looking car, especially from the back. It just looks like a basic sedan family car. But if you really look at it, the accents are nice. And I like the way it looks. It's not like too weird, but it's not too basic. It has its own nice free flowing curves and its own special design, which of course it does. That makes sense. The 11th generation Civic Sedan was revealed as a prototype in November of 2020. The production version was revealed in June 2021, and both sedan and liftback, marketed as a hatchback, body styles, North America sales began the same month, followed by Southeast, Southeast Asia in August, Japan and China in September, and Australia and New Zealand in December. European sales began in late 2022, which they, they didn't get to get their hands on the new Civic for over a year. Oh, yeah, over a year. That's crazy. The liftback body style was unveiled in June 23rd, 2021. This generation is also the first Civic since the second generation to not offer a coupe version due to its declining sales. RIP the Civic Coupe. That's kind of crazy, though. You'd think that'd be like the most purchased one would be the coupe. Well, <laughs> I take that back. If this is like a family car, you'd probably definitely get more sales of the hatchback and the sedan. I'm just surprised that not as many people are buying the coupe. You know, it seems like a car that a lot of people would like. Two door, but you still have four seats. Pretty cool. The sedan is not offered in Japan, Europe, or Australia following low sales. Of course, because not many people out of the States were buying Civics, which is kind of 
kind of surprising to me too. You'd think there'd be a hot car pretty much everywhere. Um, but that's it as of now for the Civics, for the generations we got. I'm kind of wondering what the, what the 12th gen is going to look like. They have a lot of big shoes to fill with their design choices here because they know if it's not great, they're not going to sell it much. Because I don't think a lot of people liked the 11th gen. There's definitely a big group of people who did, but I feel like there's also a large group of people who didn't really care for it at all. Which I didn't at first, but it definitely grew on me over time. And I definitely like it more now than I did. Okay, let's talk about... Let's talk about the awards that the Honda Civic as has won. Uh, as you can expect, there's a good amount of them. Especially with how much it was selling and how pretty much worldwide loved it was. Let's get right into them. Honda Civic was Honda Civic EX was International Car of the Year in 2005. From 1972 to 1974, the Civic was awarded Car of the Year Japan. In 1973, the Civic ranked third in European Car of the Year, the highest ranking for a Japanese vehicle at the time. It was also awarded the U.S. Road Test Magazine's 1974 Car of the Year. The Civic was Motor Trend Import Car of the Year for 1980, as well as its 2006 Car of the Year for Motor Trend. Uh, in 2006, the Civic earned the 2007 Semperit Irish Car of the Year. In 1996, Automobile Magazine honored the Civic as its Automobile of the Year. The Civic has been on Car and Driver Magazine's yearly 10 best list, yearly 10 best list six times. That's a weird, a weird sentence, but it was on its 10 best cars of the year list 10 times. Um, in 19... Yeah, yeah. In 1985, 1988 through 91, and 1996, the Civic Si was named Best New Sports Car, and the Sedan was named Best New Economy Car. In the 2006 Canadian Car of the Year Awards, the Civic... Oh. I don't know why I worded it this way. Uh, the Civic was named Best New Sports Car, and the Sedan was named Best New Economy Car in the 2006 Canadian Car of the Year Awards. There you go. Ah, look at that. I did it right this time. <laughs> We're all about having fun here. I'm not going to cut this out or cut that out and like re-record it. There's no point. It kind of removes the authenticity if you ask me. This is supposed to just be like you're hanging out, talking about cars with a friend. And I'm that friend. Hopefully, you don't have to be my friend. It's fine. I understand. I won't be hurt. Uh, the Civic also won the North American Car of the Year and the North American International Auto Show Car of the Year Awards for 2006. In November 2006, the Civic received the prestigious Car of the Year Award from Brazilian magazine Auto Esporte. The four-door Civic VXI sedan won the South African Car of the Year Award for 2000, 2007. And Kelly Blue Book named the 2020 Honda Civic the Compact Car Best Buy for the sixth year in a row. That's a pretty good achievement. That is a very good achievement. And you, everybody knows Civics are fantastic. You really cannot go wrong with a Civic. Especially when we go into our la our next and final topic. Racing. We're going to talk about how Civics have been used in racing throughout the years. Really cool, by the way. I absolutely love when people take stock cars. And I mean like stock car. I don't mean like stock cars like NASCAR stock cars. I mean like just a car. And they race it. That is so cool to me, in my opinion. So, as some of you may know, Honda Civics were used in touring car racing. Civics have been used for racing ever since their introduction. Civics contested the up to 1300cc class in the Bathurst 1000 touring car race at Bathurst in Australia each year from 1973 to 1976, with a best placing of second in class in both 1974 and 1976. So they performed really well. That's awesome. I mean, that's not surprising. They're lightweight and they're quick, easy to modify. Not very surprising, honestly. In recent years, the Civic has been used in a wide variety of racing series, partially in Japan, particularly in Japan, sorry. It is also used in touring car races in Europe and the United States. The Civic has been used in the UK in endurance series by teams such as Barbo Motorsport and Cartech Motorsport. In 2002, Jazz Motorsport entered the European Touring Car Championship with a Super 2000 spec 
and was used until restart season of the World Touring Car Championship in 2005. So they were popular. I mean, big teams were using these race car Civics. Pretty sweet. I mean, they look good too. If you ever looked up pictures, they look good. They're, I mean, especially with the liveries they throw them on, throw on them. But I definitely could see why they would pick such a versatile platform to race with. In the UK, the Civic has been used in the British Touring Car Championship for several years and is still highly competitive. The Civic Type R made its debut in the 2002 season with the Works team run by Arena Motorsport. Built to BTC T specifications, it gained the team third in the Manufacturer's Champion Championship. In the same year, Synchro Motorsport won the BTCC Production Team's Championship with a pair of Civic Type R's. Look at that. They won the championship with two Civic Type R's. That's pretty sweet. The 2003 season saw the Works Team Civic secure an impressive second in the Manufacturer's Championship. The 2003 BTCC Production Team's Championship also went to the Civic again, this time in the hands of Barwell Motorsport. Such was the competitiveness, competitiveness of the Civic in its first two seasons. 2004 saw five teams enter Civics, allowing the model to secure second in the Manufacturer's Championship. So people were starting to catch on to how well they're performing, so a lot more teams were starting to use them. Although manufacturer support from Honda for the BTCC ended in 2005, several teams still found success running the Civic in 2005 and 2006. For the 07 BTCC season, Team Halfords ran the new 8th generation Honda Civics built to the latest S2000 regulations for Matt Neal and Gordon Shedden with limited success and continued to use the Civic into the 2008 and 2009 season. In both 2007 and 2008, the Civic allowed the team to finish third in the team's championship behind the two manufacturer-backed teams. In 2010, Honda returned to the BTCC as a works team with Team Dynamics using Civics to win the 2010 Manufacturer's Championship. In 2011, the team returns with its Civic to defend its team and Manufacturer's Championship again with the Neil and Shedden pairing. Honda Racing Team swapped to the brand new 9th generation Honda Civic built fully to NGTC rules for the 2012 BTCC season. They are the first manufacturer-backed team to announce their intention to run fully to the NGTC specification. The drivers continue to be Matt Neal and Gordon Shedden, who are the 2011 and 2012 driver championships champions, respectively. Andrew Jordan, driving for his family-run Eurotech racing team, won the BTCC title in 2013 in their NGTC Civic, whilst Honda retained the manufacturer's championship. However, in 2014, Honda were unable to retain their title, which was instead won by MG. So, as you can see, it can't go forever. You can't stay number one forever, unfortunately. Although they, they definitely had a, a very long running and they kept that championship and that title for years. Very impressive. I mean, they still... They still are like the top of most lists. They're pretty high up in racing teams and stuff like that. So it's still very impressive. Good job, Honda. And good job to you for listening to this episode. That's going to be how we ended off with MG coming up on top. Of course. I really appreciate you listening to my podcast. I've been very stressed about getting this done today. I was going to record this episode the day before, but I ran out of a lot of time because I had to work late. So I had to squeeze getting this in today, but I originally did not have time. So luckily, as you can tell, I was able to, and I was able to get it released on time. So we're good. And I appreciate you listening to this podcast. It means so much to me, helping me grow and supporting me and my dreams means a lot not too sure what next podcast is going to be about what next episode is going to be about potentially Saturn related we're going to probably move on to second gen so that way it's not Saturn 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 I kind of want to space things out so it's not just the same brand for multiple episodes in a row I figured it might make it more fun to listen to 
So we might do second gens, but we might do something else. You'll just have to either wait until it released or if you're watching this, or sorry, listening to this much after it's released, you just have to look and then you'll know. I hope you have a great day or a great night, whatever time you're listening to this. Thank you so much for being here and listening. I hope you learned something new. Be sure to check out my Instagram, which at Saturn Spotter. That's where you'll always see updates for this podcast, my YouTube channel, whatever happens to my cars. You can always see it there. Make sure to check out my YouTube, which is Saturn Spotter as well. That's not entirely car focused. It's just kind of just kind of whatever I want to upload for fun. I do it just for fun. And but I appreciate your support regardless of what it is. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Please make sure to follow this podcast and rate this podcast with however many stars you feel appropriate. I would appreciate five stars, but of course, not required. I would feel bad asking for five stars. So yeah, enjoy your day. I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.